This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today on Know How, making Twitter less noisy and encrypt your files. Welcome to Know How. This is the show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm your host, Brian Burnett. And I'm Nathan Olivares Giles. And today we're uh, digging into Twitter because, I mean, we both use Twitter. I think Hal uses Twitter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people out there who might find it kind of overwhelming, and we we're talking about. What is the, the ratio of followers versus, um, you know, people that you can pay attention to? Yeah, uh, Hal, if you wouldn't uh, mind going to my screen. Excuse me, uh, Nate. <laughs> pronounced Alex. Oh, Alex, Alex. Um, We're going to get that right one of these someday, days. Someday, someday. I, I really, you know, I love Twitter. It's like one of my favorite social networks. It's especially exciting right now because it's going nuts due to the, the NBA draft and, of course, uh, you know a lot of lot of other stuff going on, um, but I'm following 796 people right now, That's cool. almost 800, and pretty much once a year I have this ritual where I get close to following a thousand people, mm -hmm. and you know just because there's a lot of really interesting people I want to follow out there. Yeah. You know I'm following you know other journalists, I'm following athletes, I'm following you know brands I like, I'm following comic book artists I like right. and actors and all this, you know. Or just like uh, uh, cartoon characters and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, everything. And it gets so noisy and so overwhelming mm -hmm. that it's just, it becomes l like not fun to use anymore. It's like walking into a room where everybody, there's like a hundred people and they're all talking at the same time. Exactly, and they're talking over each other. It's hard to keep up. It becomes, frankly, a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. So uh, a couple years ago, uh, I found uh, a little kind of JavaScript, I guess you could call it a, a hack, but it, mm -hmm. it, it was uh, actually, I found it on a YouTube video, uh, and over the years, Twitter kind of blocked that, and the most recent version of this I found is actually on GitHub, oh, okay. um, and basically, it's just a little bit of, of uh, JavaScript code, uh, and you want to do this in Chrome or Firefox, I, I haven't quite found the same ability to do this uh, in... Uh, Safari, uh, Safari yeah. as of yet, but just go into um, Chrome, go to View, then go to your developer tools and go into your JavaScript console, mm. and uh, it's 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 just like a simple little little bit of code right here, uh, and then you just copy and paste that uh, into the JavaScript console, and it huh. will um, unfollow people from Twitter for you. Now you can already see these folks that I was following just a second ago. It now shows them as me not following them anymore. Um, You're unfollowing people live right now. Yeah, I'm unfollowing people live right now. <laughs> Please, he actually, Heather's a <laughs> great journalist at CNN. She's one of my friends. I'm gonna want to follow her back. I hope she doesn't take this personal. Um, but. Every once in a while, as you're doing this, Twitter will recognize what you're doing, and then it'll actually stop that, so you just got to paste that uh, little bit of code again, wow. and then as you can see, it, it does it. And yeah. so you just kind of keep scrolling, and you just kind of see where it stops, and then when it stops, you just paste it again, uh -huh. and then you just kind of go through the process. Now, for about 800 people, it might take you 15 minutes or so of, of right. doing this. It's a bit of a chore, uh, but it can make Twitter a much more harmonious place. Now, along with that, then you gotta start over and you're starting from zero and you're like, okay, who do I want to follow? Right. The first thing that I do is I actually just think to myself, okay, when I go to Twitter, who do, who do I wanna see, <laughs> right? And then if I can't remember you just based off of my memory, then you might not have been that important. Uh, in my in my daily life now, and yeah. that might sound a bit harsh, and I'm sorry, <laughs> but you got to keep it real here, you know. Uh, like that's some just... people are better tweeters, Twitterers than than others. Exactly. You know? Now another uh, a tip that I might suggest. This is something that I've done. Done. I created a private list called Reboot, and right now it's about 43 people, uh, and I and I add to it from time to time. But these are people that I know I'm going to always want to follow on Twitter. So after I totally 
get rid of everybody. I start from zero. I come back in here, and then I just start following people again. Um, you know, these are some friends and some people that I know and some people that I don't know and uh, folks that I just know that I'm going to want to follow again. So that's kind of a way to 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 start from zero. Okay, so like after you've done the nuclear option yeah. and, and just <laughs> decimated your entire followership or yeah. your following, uh, then you have your, your list of survivors that you go back you to. You have your <laughs> list of survivors, exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's kind of a, a brutal way to, to talk about it. We're talking about Hunger Games approach to, right. to what you got. We're just, you know, everybody's going out. Only so many people will survive. Yeah. Uh, and now, inevitably, some folks get offended and they're like, hey, why did you unfollow me or whatever? Why aren't right. you following me anymore? I try to DM you. Was it you. something I said? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I always, never, I always have to say, okay, listen, I'm, you know, I'm doing my, you know, one to two time a year ritual of unfollowing everybody yeah. and starting from zero on Twitter. This is really the only social network that I do that yeah. uh, with. You know, I wish there was something similar with Instagram because Instagram for me is becoming a place where it's becoming uh, uh, too noisy, and mm -hmm. I wish there were some features like this. Uh, but since that's just a mobile app with, you know, you can't really, either, they have a website, but it's pretty sparse. Yeah. It's There's not, the not really an equivalent uh, to, like that. Um, do you ever do that on Facebook too? Go through your, your list of friends and uh, get uh, you rid know, of a few or unlist them? I need to do that. I've, yeah. I did that years ago with Facebook and I actually really want to do that with LinkedIn too because yeah. I get requests from people on LinkedIn. It's like, I don't know you. I've never worked with you. <laughs> you know, this is a professional yeah. social network. But like, please why? endorse me. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. And it's like, well, okay, I guess that's networking. You have to kind of figure it out for yourself. Yeah. Uh, but I know there's definitely people on uh, LinkedIn that I'm connected to that I frankly wish I wasn't. Um, but, but Twitter, thankfully, this is the easiest social network to actually start from zero with. Well, and um, I think it's the the most necessary social network to do that with because it's just so so much posting of things yeah. happening over. It's just a waterfall of yeah. stuff. Like I know um, there's other interfaces that you can use, and Twitter's although it's been very notoriously cut out third party app developers and stuff. Yeah. But uh, what's the the one that you use, Alex, for displaying a bunch of tweets and things like that? It's not TweetDeck, is it? Uh, Tweetium. Tweetium. So it's just a Windows uh, UWP app. Yeah, do you use any other like display ways to display Twitter, or you just go straight you know, to the site? I used to, uh, but now I'm pretty much just going straight to the site because they've really cut off a lot of those third-party mm -hmm. apps, and I kind of feel like uh, t you know TweetDeck and some others, w they've just kind of stopped updating and adding new features, and they've got to feel a bit stale. Mm -hmm. And frankly, the stuff where there there is the most experimentation, where there is the most you know, I don't want to say innovation, but the no, most new ideas uh, is happening on Twitter's own website, their core product, yeah. as well as their mobile app. So um, I used to use some third-party clients, um, but these days, no, I'm just sticking to their website because that's, frankly, the most exciting place to consume Twitter right now. Okay. Were there any other tips that you had for, like, hunting down uh, hashtags or yeah. relevant stuff like that? Yeah. So this is all about making Twitter harmonious and, you know, making it not a pain to hang out in. Um, and one of the things that uh, I think is a good tip for folks is really kind of thinking about how you're using Twitter versus how you, you might have used it before. Uh, for me, I've always used it in a, in a somewhat professional context. But uh, when I first hopped on, like back in 2007, 2008. Early adopter. Yeah, yeah, well, a little early. You know, not, 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 <laughs> yeah. the, not the first by any means. I don't but think I started using Twitter until I started working at Twit, and that was like 2011. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, uh, earlier than you, but. And part of the reason why I don't have Cranky Hippo, I'm Cranky underscore Hippo, is for that reason. For that reason. Bummer. Bummer. Yeah. If, if you like have that. at Cranky Hippo, Consider giving it to this guy. That guy has Just not posted in there. years. I hate that. I hate that. I, 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 I have a similar situation with an Xbox gamer tag I want with someone who hasn't posted it in years. He doesn't um, even have an icon or anything. See, that's yeah. not much. That that mm -hmm. that. That's that's brutal. Justin Fisher, if you're <laughs> watching, listening. <laughs> what would the process Help be? Brian would I have out. to talk, send him a message <laughs> or something? Like, I'm not sure. I, I, know. Th I think there are situations where if it's your actual brand, you can reach out to Twitter. If it's your business, <laughs> you can reach out to Twitter, and they'll uh, do something for you. If someone's sitting yeah. on an account like that, and that's very much someone who's not using an account, who's basically sitting on that handle, that username, yeah. might not even be a real person, you should reach out to Twitter about that because, you know, uh, it's, it's business related. They have not tweeted since 2009. Uh, and, it, you know, maybe we should do a, a way to 
figure out how to verify yourself too. Y- yeah. Because are you verified on Twitter? I am verified, okay. but that was a situation where because I was a tech journalist, uh, they reached out to me and they said, "Hey, we want to get you verified. You have to do these things." Okay. It was through the newsroom I was working in at the time, um, but uh, you know, I, I don't know how to how to. Get I ver- knew someone who used to work on the network who created like two or three different accounts for themselves uh-huh. that were very similar to the one that they wanted Didn't verified. Did you have multiple accounts at one time? He may have. Yeah, I'm I, not thinking. He probably he's did done this a, too. One now, but I thought he had like two at one point. <laughs> he probably um, does have like many more than I would care to wish to know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there was someone who made multiple Twitter accounts that were similar enough to their the one that they wanted verified, and then said, "Hey, Twitter, like, could you verify my account?" because there's all these imposters trying yeah. to be me. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. What a way to scam the system, yeah. game the system. Mm-hmm. Well, another tip, um, you know, like I said, you, if you've been using Twitter for a long time, maybe you started using Twitter in college. Maybe you tweeted some embarrassing things. You don't want those things to, to necessarily be out there on the Internet anymore. Uh, Twitter has some decent advanced search tools. Uh, and you can literally, like, look for, you know, let's type in the word drunk. And let's see if I've ever sent any tweets using that word. (laughs) And hopefully it's not too embarrassing. (laughs) So I have sent a lot of tweets with that word. Um, Your drunk filter game is on point. Yeah, I wonder wonder what the conversation is for that. Uh, Okay, yeah, and my buddy Trace is saying... I might be drunk, so you know that's that's an interesting that's an interesting conversation. Might be one that we might want to delete from the internet, but um, it looks like most of the time we've been talking about Punch Drunk Love the movie. Okay. There's a couple of tweets about that. A drunk guy just yeah. peed on the floor. Okay, at least it wasn't you. No, it was not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do remember that night. I was at a pupuseria in Los Angeles, uh, and a drunk guy peed on the floor. That was an amazing night. That's smart, because this way you can go back in and make sure there wasn't anything that might be embarrassing. Yeah, Yeah, you might have started out with your Twitter account being private, and now it's going public. You've mm-hmm. gotten older. Hopefully, you're a more mature and well-rounded person right. You know, uh, uh, than you were a few years ago. Hopefully, all of us are. <laughs> myself included. I feel like I need to do a Twitter search with Padre, SJ, and your mom as the keywords because I feel like there's probably a few out there. There might be a few out there. That's something to think (laughs) about. Um, And, you know, with that, you can also go into um, your settings pane uh, and go into your accounts. And you can go right here uh, towards the bottom, if you can see that, Alec. Yeah, right there. And you can actually ask for your Twitter archive. I asked for one earlier today. Ah. They're going to send me my entire Twitter archive. So if I did want to delete something like that, you know, uh, if there's some gems, uh, you know, from my past that I might want to rifle through. <laughs> Pass down your Twitter archive to your children. <laughs> here's yes, the way. Here's <laughs> the way to do that. Now there are some. <laughs> there are some who have used Twitter for like writing exercises and literary experiments and yeah. you know poetry on the fly and all sorts of things like that. Or, or you know, I have some friends who have some great jokes on Twitter. Uh, I don't think my Twitter account is th- as interesting as those. Yeah. But there might be reasons why you might want to request an archive for those sorts of purposes. Okay. Um, I don't know if the Library of Congress is still doing it, but I know a few years ago they were actually archiving public tweets, like all of them, yeah. uh, which is pretty interesting <laughs> as well. Like a vacuum. I don't know, yeah. the last article I, saw, I was able to find on it said that, uh, that it was six years ago that the Library of Congress decided to uh, archive every single tweet, and it turns out that's pretty hard to do. So <laughs> Yeah, not easy stuff. I don't know. Not easy stuff. How big was the file of your archive? Do you know? uh, it hasn't shown up oh, yet. Okay. Yeah, I just requested it. Uh, maybe we can talk about how, how big the archive is in a future episode. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Cool. Okay, so, so again... You, you mentioned the nuclear option uh, yep. for unfollowing everybody that you're following, mm-hmm. something that I'm a huge advocate of and I, I, I think you should consider doing if Twitter is an obnoxious and noisy place to you. If your own account, you just want to start over, you want to start fresh, you're not yeah. happy with, with your presence or whatever, Twitter also gives, well, Twitter doesn't, but third parties also give you the option to delete all your tweets. So you can literally start from zero on that regard. Wow. I'm not going to do that um, because <laughs> I like my tweets, but one option Will is uh, is, a, is a service called TweetDelete at TweetDelete.net. Um, and it's one that's been recommended by uh, a few uh, tech journalists that I know. Uh, oh, and there's okay. another app, if you're doing this on mobile and you don't want to do it on the desktop, uh, there's an iOS app called Tweet Aside. <laughs> uh, the delete. icons, uh, I guess, yeah. gets the message across. Yeah. Now, uh, Twitter actually only uh, displays up to, I think it's 2,300 tweets at once. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, this will do it 
in those 2,300 uh, tweet chunks. I see. Uh, <laughs> let's see how many tweets I have. Yeah, I have 80,000. I have almost 81,000 tweets. Wow. Uh, which is a lot. So, um, yeah, as you can see, I, uh, you know, I might have to do tweet aside a couple times <laughs> to get through all of my tweets. A couple times tops. <laughs> yeah, I think I have t almost 3,000 tweets is where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. So something to think about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think all, you know, all of these tips together, uh, you, can, you can use them to hopefully make Twitter a better, more harmonious place for you to hang out in. Yeah, because it, it can be very overwhelming uh, sometimes when you just sign in like that and you get bombarded with all those tweets. But uh, when you first had told me that you were going to do this, the little, yeah. the few hacks and stuff, I remembered the the few niggles that I had with Twitter was cross uh, posting things. Yes. Uh, and one of them has been for me is that you can through Instagram's app post to Twitter and Facebook. Um, but whenever you used to do it through Twitter, it would just show up with a link. Yeah. And you know, when people are just going through their feed of Twitter. It's not a great experience. Nobody wants to have to take that extra no. step to click a link. And what, what pisses me off about that the most is that this used to work, mm -hmm. and then Instagram and Twitter, I can't remember who said it was, but someone cut off that pipeline on one end. Right. Because when I first started using Instagram, and I was on, on Twitter, you could share those links, and it, it would embed the image. Yeah. Uh, but they cut that off a few years ago. For some reason, Twitter and Instagram... <laughs> don't like to play nice. That's so weird. I wonder why that would be. Hmm. Hmm. Strange. Well, fortunately, I got to play around again with uh, If This Then That, which we've talked about a few times on the show before. But yeah. in this instance, um, and if you're able to go to my machine, I'll, I have a couple of services that I tried with it. And uh, with, with some ease, uh, the Twitter one worked perfectly. So I was able to add this recipe in my applets of, uh, I just did a search for tweets in Instagram. And I saw this one pop up. And I was like, oh yeah, I really would like to have native photos on Twitter. Yeah. Activated it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with uh, if this and that, it hooks into your account. So you have to give it access to Instagram. You have to give it access to your Twitter. But once you do, you activate the applet and then it will pull, it will automatically do the recipe that it it gave to you. It basically automates actions for you. I mean, that's, which is that's, cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of people have made these uh, these recipes, you know, pre-made. But you can connect apps as you see fit, and it can get really complicated or be as easy as, as you would like it to be. But if you go back to my computer, I posted this uh, Grand Canyon picture from Instagram, and it showed up uh, full screen. And so. so I noticed that it generated automatically. Uh, and if this, then that shortened URL. Mm -hmm. If you click that URL, it would still take you to Instagram? I think so. So, yeah, it's an ift.tt. There you go. Yeah. And then, awesome. Then Instagram, yeah. So that was one thing that I wanted to try. And also one of the reasons that I wanted to do this, uh, this test this out was that Padre did not explain to me how he's doing his Twitter bot. Yeah, if you, if you all haven't <laughs> noticed, you know, Padre's on a bit of a, a, a break, a retreat, and mm -hmm. uh, he set up his tweets to automatically, well, it seems like a couple times a day, send out messages. He's been sending out messages and some to specific people, some uh, to... A lot to you. A lot to me. <laughs> One, he gave me... Gave me uh, cruft about not watering the plants. And yeah, he literally yeah, sent you these ones a doing. picture of his plants yeah. and reminded you to feed So the, like even when he's not around, he's still irritating me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so I was trying to figure out how he might have done it, and my first thought was if this and that, and I found one, a recipe that does schedule <clears throat> tweets using your Google Calendar. Whoa, whoa, Google Calendar, like that sounds like the weirdest place. You know, why would I want to write a tweet? Like, That's, how does that work? So it makes sense if you make a Google Calendar uh -huh. and you list it with the title scheduled tweet, and in the description you type out what you want posted on Twitter, wow. it will grab it and then post it on Twitter. That's so cool because literally you'd be using the calendar to say, like, this is an event that's happening. Mm -hmm. Your scheduled tweet, it, that helps if this and that recognize that that's what it is. Yep. And then it just goes to the description to pull out the actual text of your message. So I know that's he's so doing smart. something like that. Because okay. some, some calendar or some sort of schedule where it's yeah. like, at this time, tweet this. Yeah. But somehow the, the way he's doing it, he's able to do it with photos 
photos with um, he is with gifts. Ridiculous and awesome oh. and a bit obnoxious. I'm all yeah, at once. That's that's <laughs> Padre in a nutshell. It's he, so good. If, uh, it's so good. And he doesn't is, do anything if he can't irritate someone a little bit. Well, this is great because using this, you don't necessarily have to like you know know any coding. You're not having to build a bot. Mm -hmm. you, you're literally just setting up an automated process. That is that is a cool recipe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, definitely check out if this and that if you just want to see what you can play around with. Um, but remember that it's going to hook into a lot of different services that you might use, which may be helpful. Or you know, if you for there have been recipes that I've set up that I forgot about. Oh, like yeah. there's a Foursquare one that I uh -huh. stopped using a long time ago. But it was like every time I would check in at a place, it would post it or something or tweet it, and like oh. it's really easy to forget recipes sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that one didn't work anymore. But cool. I think that's. <laughs> Pretty much everything. Are you still have. using Foursquare or? No, no, because yeah. what did it turn it into? It, it became Swarm? Swarm, but I, th you know, it's been such a long time. I, I, gave I up used on Swarm it. when it first came out, and I really wasn't into I it. I had one reason to use it, and that was to get mayorship of like certain areas, and then once that stopped being fun, I just gave up. Why? I don't understand why mayorship was such a big deal, but I was so into that. <laughs> there was this restaurant called a Cactus. It was a taqueria in Los Angeles that I used mm -hmm. to go to all the time. And myself and two other friends would fight over the, the mayorship. Usually we were having tacos with each other at the same time. It was like, who would check in at what time? Yep. But that mayorship went back and forth between the three of us. Well, that pretty was pretty ridiculous. The breakfast place outside of our old studio was the place that I wanted to get okay. mayorship at, Hallie's. And I think I fought Alex with, about it like, I don't know. We went back and forth a few times over the course of like six months or something. Wow. And then I just gave up. I'm like, I, I think we were both it. winners in that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone every, won. Everybody's a winner when you strive to be the mayor of a virtual world. All right. I'm going to throw out something super obscure, and yeah. you all may or may not remember it. But do you all remember Gowalla? Gowalla? No. Gowalla was yeah. like, it, it was built from a team, I believe, based out of Austin. It was right when uh, Foursquare was popping off, and mm -hmm. it was a competitor. And it was great. They would give you like little stamps, and I felt like the stamps were much better designed. I'm not sure if uh, if, if anyone out there uh, watching <laughs> remembers Gowalla, yeah. but if you do, uh, go mention that in the Know How Google Plus community. <laughs> if you have memories or screenshots of Gowalla, yeah. like I would love to know because I genuinely really liked Gowalla. I was bummed when it went away. Oh. I can't remember who bought it. I want to say Facebook bought the team, but I'm not sure. Uh, don't quote me on that. So was it like an aqua hire then? It was an aqua hire, and they yeah. shut it down. And you know, there was a nice little note saying, "Oh, you know, we we realized that our <laughs> our goals aligned with their goals, and so now we're going to be part of this team, and we're going to reach more people." Blah right. blah. More like ka ching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I was genuinely bummed that yeah. Goala went away. Well, but rest in peace, Goala. Uh, you know, no <laughs> offense to Foursquare, but. Goala was where it's at. Yeah, that, that yeah. was before. I don't know. I had never heard of it, but <laughs> yeah. I, I sound, sounds like I missed out. Uh, well, so you know how you talk, talked about earlier about archiving and downloading your uh, your Twitter stuff? Yeah. That might be something you would want to encrypt because if you download it and someone has access to it, then they could then dive through all those tweets that you were you're like, well, I deleted all these, but I, I made an archive just just in case. The yeah. evidence would be there. That's the a evidence good point. would still be there. You might not want people snooping through your stuff. Exactly. And uh, so last week we talked about some of the cloud services that we used. Yeah, and cloud services, and we also talked about local storage. Basically, mm -hmm. how to store the things you care about remotely and locally. Right. So I thought it would be a good chance to talk about some encryption tools that I use. Um, they're all free, and, and some of them are built into the OSs. But the, some of the reasons why you might want to encrypt something, it's, it's the same, I always like kind of, it's the equivalent of closing the blinds on your house or locking your front door. Yep. You might not necessarily have anything to hide, but what you don't want people digging through your photos or your Twitter archive and stuff like totally. that. Totally. You know? You um, might have, you know, important documents, financial documents, tax documents, mm -hmm. who knows? Yeah, bills, receipts. Um, pff, I'm sure I've sent stuff to Alex that I uh, no, no, don't want anyone <laughs> that to you ever might not see. want on the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hashtag, just don't search hashtag, hashtag drunk through any of the, <laughs> the Twitter stuff. That, that was a big, that was Alex, big so. gamble. I'm glad that worked out for me <laughs> without being too embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but the first one that I, I have kind of played around with, and it's good for doing like individual files and stuff, and kind of ease of use, is called AxeCrypt. Okay. Um, this is a Windows. It works on Windows. It'll work on iOS and Google Play. Uh, not a lot of high reviews though, uh, mm -hmm. as far as the mobile apps concerned. But a lot of people recommended this because you can um, 
it's easy for doing groups of files that are on like Dropbox or something like that. Oh, nice. And so if you're able to go to my screen, Alex, this is the interface. It's pretty simple. Um, some of the premium features like uh, setting a date to decrypt or sending it to someone uh, someone else who could, like adding a list of users who could decrypt it. Uh, some of those features are like, uh, you have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. But for the free version, you can just encrypt stuff. Uh, one thing that I encrypted was Burke's shipping. And that was when I Burke asked me to buy something for him on eBay. Okay. And so, he, but he asked for the shipping address and stuff. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll send that to you, but I don't want, you know, someone to get your information. So I'll encrypt this and send it to you via email. Sounds like a good call. And so if I've moved it over to a thumb drive, and it's encrypted right now. It's got the little logo on it. Nice. Um, but if you don't have this app or the password... You can't decrypt it. You can't decrypt it. And I'm pretty sure I remember what the, <laughs> the password was. Uh, was it know-how show? <laughs> I made a couple different versions of these files to make sure that they worked. Oh, mobile apps are now included. Would you like to know more? Nope. Nope. <laughs> so that's one of the downsides to and the Well, yeah, the free the versions free version. are always loaded with apps. It's going to have you a little, little pop-up. Try out. premium, you saw pop-up. You, you can show this screen, Al. Uh, this, was, this is the image. But oh, if you great. didn't know the password, mm -hmm. uh, you would never be able to access this. And, you know, the information here is, is actually Twit's address. So, And I bought him a, an ECU for his motorcycle. Oh, so. very cool. But awesome. he paid me, so it was cool. <laughs> okay, 75 bucks. That's not, that's not a terrible price. No, but it didn't fix the problem he was having with his motorcycle. Oh. So, <laughs> bummer for Burke. <laughs> <Burk, but, laughs> but nobody was able to access that information except for me and him. <laughs> but when that I, was secure. When I sent him that uh, encryption. Uh, the other, device, other uh, encryption software that is included with Windows, and it has been since, like, Vista, yeah. um, is called BitLocker. And, and that's, this is built directly into the Windows operating system. Yeah, and so you can do... So unlike the last one I talked about, Axe... Uh, what was it? Axe, whatever. Uh, Axe <laughs> Axe Script, Axe Script. Where you can only do individual files with that one. Uh, BitLocker will let you do full drive encryption. So if you wanted to do your OS drive, or mm -hmm. if you wanted to do a... Um, like a USB storage uh, drive, this would be one that you could do the whole drive with. Like right now you can see I have a USB uh, drive plugged in called Silverlit. I don't know why. <laughs> but I can turn on BitLocker. I'm pretty sure this is one of the USB drives I got from like a press event. You know? Okay, yeah. <laughs> but you click on it, you can say use password to unlock the drive, which uh, should be sufficient for this. And if you if I open up the drive right now, I can access it. I've got a couple of podcasts that uh, I've listened to on this drive and, and Burke's, Burke's uh, JPEG, so it's going to be double encryption. <laughs> but uh, let's see. I'll do know how show, because I think with this one you have to have uh, a certain length and character. It's like any other uh, password service where like, you want it to be a tough password, but you also want it to be one that you remember. Yeah, a bit of a passphrase. But of course, you know, while we're doing this, of course, Know How Show is just, you know, something Brian's using specifically to test his stuff out. <laughs> if you yeah. are actually coming up with a password, use some capital letters to mix things up, use some numbers, use some symbols. Yep. Make it tough. And then this is an option for if you want a recovery key. So if you need to access this uh, with with your key, you can mm -hmm. save it to a file or print it, the recovery key. I'm just going to save the file for now. And, Great. And but don't you know leave this key somewhere where other people can read it because then they can get the key and then use that to un unencrypt your files. Makes sense. Uh, so let's see. Choose how much of your drive you want to encrypt. Uh, if you do the f just the used disk space, it'll go faster. But you can do the entire drive. I'm just going to do the disk space. This is a small drive. It took me like maybe a couple minutes and to so encrypt it. Just the disk space, that's just basically the files that you have on this drive here, but not yes. like the full operating not system. Not the full on, one. Sort of so thing. if you have a really big drive and you do the full drive, it's yeah. going to take a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this will just do the the files that are stored locally, just a small subsection of the files. That's awesome. And since it's built into Windows, it's smart enough to recognize like this is a file versus this is an app or something. Like yeah. This yeah. is what we should encrypt versus, no, nah, it's okay to leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, well, Alex pointed out too, if you encrypt your drive and you need to, what was it? If you were going to do a fresh install, uh, you couldn't get if into the OS. If your system drive is, is uh, encrypted with BitLocker tied to your account, to your right. Microsoft account that you're signing in with, 
nobody else can open that hard drive or access that hard drive right. without that without the recovery. Key. So like if, if if Brian gave me his laptop and said, "Here Nate, you can you can have it now. Hand me down." You won't be able to I wouldn't log be able to without his password or get into anything unless you and boot from some other drive and, and wipe the, the hard drive completely. So, right. so decrypt before you give it to a friend or family member. Yeah, ideally, yes. <laughs> ideally. Okay, well, well yeah. honestly, if you're de doing decrypt that... Decrypt and wipe. I de and wipe. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is decrypt and wipe. You just don't want to ever hand, hand it that stuff. Over, right. So. Or if you're sending in, uh, like, for example, if you're sending in something for repair yeah. or yeah. if you're sending in something like they send you a refurbished one and they want you to send your old one back, yeah. wipe them. Like, yeah, if you have anything on there, just wipe them. Yeah. Uh, I have a phone that I have to send back and do that with. But It's funny. I actually did this recently with a Windows Surface Book laptop, uh, you know, the one with the cloth keyboard or whatever. Um, yeah. I was doing a first look on it for the new screensavers, handing it off to Leo. He was going to test it out. Uh, well, And I totally, uh, using the uh, the built-in uh, res you know, reset mm -hmm. options in Windows, totally like totally reset the entire computer, the entire operating system, uh -huh. everything. It, it, I think we had it, it like took overnight. It like, oh, to reset everything? Yeah, it took it, hours. You have an option to do a quick wipe or a yeah. thorough wipe. Yeah, is we did a thorough wipe. Is that a zero fill then I think option? essentially. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. it just, it just whew, gone. So, so that's what you should use <laughs> if you're going to be giving it to somebody else or selling it or yeah. turning it in. But if you're just right. wiping it just to reset it for your own sake, then you don't need to bother with yeah. that. Yeah, right. But it, I was surprised by how long it took. Yeah, and for people who might not know, uh, zero filling a drive is not only just deleting the headers for the file that are saved to the drive, it's actually writing over the old data because when you delete a file, it doesn't actually delete it. Yeah, it, it just doesn't. the directory. Exactly. It doesn't recognize that it's there anymore so that if something else comes along the way to be written over the top of it, it's free to do so with that space. Yeah. But what that means is if somebody did get a hold of your device, pulls your hard drive out, they could find a way to access those right. so-called deleted files. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, if you're gonna be encrypting a USB drive, you can do this. And I would recommend doing compatible mode if you're gonna be moving a drive to from device to device. Um, you could do new encryption mode, but Microsoft recommends that's for just drives that are like basically the OS drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then hit encryption. And uh, this shouldn't take too long. Let's see. 1.3. Oh, this looks like it's going to take just as long as it did to encrypt the full drive. Well, all right. <laughs> you go ahead and encrypt that whole drive there. <laughs> 5.9. You encrypt that drive. We'll just let this run out and then and I will how, speed it up and, and edit it. See how long it takes. So if you. Oh, there it goes. It's done. Hey, cool. It went really fast, actually. Um, the encryption of D is complete and close it. So if I take out this drive and I put it back into the machine, it will pop up with not accessible. <laughs> accessible. Access is denied. I hit OK. All right, that's, that's fine if you don't want to give me access to it because then when I go back to file manager, you can see on the USB drive, it has a little lock on it now. Nice. Meaning that it's bit locked. So now I have to remember the password that is prompting me for, and I'm pretty sure it was know how show. <laughs> uh, unlock. There you and go. And boom, I've got access Bam. to all that whole drive now is uh, is mine again. So I have access to those those files. The Adventures of Noodle Plash. I, uh, uh, that's a Adventures of. That's a little bit of a uh, underrated movie. Oh, so. oh, you were reading the title? Yeah, the, yeah. Have you ever heard of How Did This Get Made? Uh, another <laughs> no, podcast? No, no, uh, no, I didn't. It's like uh, they just review terrible, terrible movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, this is this is one. I feel like that is kind of for me on the same level. Say like. The Masters of the Universe with Dolph Lundgren. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a guilty pleasure. Oh, totally. Are you a Mystery Science Theater fan at all, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like that, but not during the movie. It's okay. like after the fact. I have to check that out. I'm going to have to check that out. Um, one more that we use a lot here, even at the office, and I've like every time I do a fresh install of mm -hmm. uh, a new computer or something, it's like one of the two or three apps that I install right away. Like first is Chrome, yeah. and then it's like, uh, then it's 7-Zip. And so. 
I think I have a, a link to it for the website, which is pretty basic. Like, I don't think they've changed 7-Zip's website in it's a tough, long, long time. When I see websites like that, I immediately think, is this shady or not? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It does give that off a little bit. But 7-Zip's been around for a long time, and it works with Windows, Mac, and Linux. Nice. Um, and basically, it's an archival um, program, so you can compress multiple files into a zip file, which makes them a lot easier uh, to send via email or or USB or whatever. Oh, awesome. But if you are using it to compress files, you can also add encryption to it. Um, it's Ooh. also free, I think. So if you had, say, this USB drive that I've got, and I just want to encrypt mm, two of these files uh -huh. here. Let's see. Right-click, 7-zip, and I can go then to... Uh, and I compress, you can compress it as a 7Z, but I mean, if you want for compatibility reasons, I usually just do a zip. I do a compress mm -hmm. to a zip. I might have done to an email. Hold on. There's no email. Oh, program. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of it is for like emailing, um, yeah. compressing, and then emailing. Let's see, 7-zip. Maybe just add to archive. Okay, yeah. You go to add to archive, and then you can drill down to what specifications you want. So oh, I, great. I will do um, two podcast <laughs> mp3 dot zip. Uh, normal compression, you can choose a bunch of different. Normal's fine. You don't really have to mess with most of these settings, but the mm -hmm. one that I want to focus on is now encryption. encryption. And you can do AES-256 or zip crypto. Um, Great. Either one works fine. Uh, and so then if you put in this password and say you send me these files, do I have to know this password to decrypt them as well? You do. You do. But you awesome. don't have to have 7-zip to, to be able it. to access it. Great. So just to know <laughs> it's know-how? OK. So yeah, say prior, we, we've discussed that I'm going to send you a file. Mm -hmm. The password is know-how. I'm not going to let, I'm just going to verbally tell you that. <laughs> Somehow we, we have discussed this in the future. In, in, the, in the future past. In the future. Days of, days future, of the future, future, future past here. On exactly. Our, uh, all right. And cool. then I send that file to you. You, uh, oh, you open it on your computer, use the password, and it uncompresses. And then you now have those files. Awesome. That is easy. Although I think I may have saved it to my documents area. You should probably specify specify where you want it to go. Where did it go? This is a stop down, Alex. <laughs> where the hell did it go? Uh, ask no, Cortana. Ask Cortana where it's at. I disabled Cortana. Oh, did you? Actually, I don't know if I did on this machine, but... Oh, no, there it is. I guess... What the hell? All right, well, that was a stop down. <clears throat> we'll pick up here. And so after doing 7-zip and compressing it with the encryption, it just looks like a normal zip compressed zip file. And, and there it is. There it is. And there's Easy. the two files in there. And I can send that along to you. And when you try and open it, it will ask you for a password. I love it. I love it. Definitely, definitely worth using. You know, it's, it's great to offer this extra level of con, uh, encryption because maybe you're using something like Gmail. It's encrypted in transit, but mm -hmm. Google is decrypting it uh, on on the viewer end, so that they can use it to to target ads to you. Right. So they can right. use it to search through what you got. And if you want to keep something extra private from even your service providers, mm -hmm. this is sounds like a good option to do that. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, one thing to note is no encryption is infallible, yep. uh, no matter how strong it is. But these are some of the ways that you can. You know, don't be the low-hanging fruit, basically. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There are still programs out there that can crack, can brute force a lot of these things. And if you do a crummy password on your encryption, it doesn't matter. Like, if Or if you leave your key saved to your desktop and someone gets a hold of that. Um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned yeah. that. I mean, you know, the truth is that sometimes the human element is the biggest vulnerability in all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And you really got to be on your game uh, with your passwords and keeping everything organized and, and legit. Uh, if you're going to be using these tools, because if you're using all of these tools and you got the same password everywhere, mm -hmm. you're just asking to be taken <laughs> advantage of here. You, yeah, you definitely are. And uh, I didn't want to leave Mac users out, so the last one I have uh, listed here is called File File Vault, which I've used on all my Macs. Yeah, um, actually, Alex, if you go to to, to my computer. Uh, 
Uh, it's it's right here in your system preferences. You can go to security and privacy, and there you go. Boom. Super easy to turn on. It basically just has an on or an off option. Yeah, and you can also choose to uh, save your key uh, locally, or you can save. I think you can back it up to iCloud. So then, if later you need to recover, yep. you know something, you can get it through your iCloud services. So. Yeah, there's some there's some great options there. Uh, every single Mac that I have, I turn this on. Not a bad idea. Yep. So, so that's how it should be everything, I think. We covered Twitter hacks and tips and tricks, and then what to do when you have downloaded all your archived tweets and <laughs> crypt them. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a fun episode. I guess, is there anything else that you feel like you we left out? No, I feel like we covered the bases, and you know, just as you mentioned earlier, with the previous episode talking about cloud storage, and uh, portable hard drives and uh, you know network local hard drives. All of these things kind of come together to help you manage and take care of the stuff that you got. So mm -hmm. if you haven't uh, you know listened and, and watched that previous episode, go check that out. But you know really with these two uh, companion pieces together, yeah, I think we got your uh, bases covered. Uh, I mean, and hey, we talked about it a lot in the last episode. We didn't talk about it here, mm -hmm. but you know, turning on two-factor authentication, you know, wherever possible. Uh, uh, and Twitter offers that as well. Uh, there's there's one more final Twitter tip for you. That's right. Yeah, you talked about the the last episode, and it, in case somebody out there has missed it, you could find it at twit.tv slash kh. And not only will you find that past episode, but all the past episodes we've ever done. And if you did miss that episode, it's probably because you have not subscribed yet, which you can do there, and download the episode. Also, all the apps that I mentioned, uh, all the tips that we have, will be listed in the show notes so you can find those those URLs the website and everything but uh, if you want if you have tips suggestions what your method of encryption is or what you're what you like to do when you're backing stuff up or even using Twitter uh, you can join the community of the know-it-alls the key does is what me and Padre <laughs> call them uh, and post your projects there ask questions talk is, about Goala I, Go I yes see, I want to know if I'm the only person who remembers Goala <laughs> talk about Goala on the Google Plus community I'm in it too. Oh, yeah, post some pictures too. I yeah. want to see what these icons used to I look swear like. it exists. I don't yeah. know if Alec can, uh, can, can find it on the <laughs> internet and bring it up real quick, Al, but but it's a real thing. I didn't make this up. Yeah, right. It's a good idea though. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like, Walla. there you go. It has a Wikipedia page. It's true. When did it close? Does it say? August 2000? Closed in 2012. Oh, 2012. And does it say who bought it? Oh, and look, venture capital funding led by oh. uh, a few different folks, including Kevin Road, uh, Kevin Rose and Jason Calcanis, yes. a couple friends of, of Twit, a couple yeah. friends of the network, <laughs> and, and, and started in, down in Austin, Texas. I tell you, I, I, I almost nailed it. <laughs> who, did, did it say who bought it? I want to... Uh, can we fact check yeah, that? Yeah, Facebook. Was it Facebook. Facebook. Good I got call. it. You got, I got it. it. Nice. All right. Wow. So I, yeah, I, get... I know my obscure Goala history. I don't know why I'm proud of You're that. A big but Goala there. fan. <laughs> but don't let that uh, make you stop from posting in the Google Plus. Yeah. So if that's you use the point Goala, here. we'd like to hear about it. <laughs> Uh, but that's not the only place you can find us on the socials. You can contact me or Nate directly. I'm at cranky underscore, <laughs> underscore hippo. Uh, on the you Twitters. Are on the Twitters. And I'm at Nate OG. And, well, he's, he's uh, yeah, Padre, you can follow him, too. He's been still posting stuff, even though he's completely disconnected from the internet. He just won't leave you alone. Uh, make all the episodes be easy like this. He's tormenting me. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> uh -huh. And also, I should mention Alex. You can follow him at ANLEF3. Excuse me, Brian. That's Oh, wait, you got it. Oh, yeah. I knew I'd get it right one <laughs> of these days. He's just so used to you getting it wrong. Yeah, that's that true. he's astounded when you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we won't make that a habit. No, not at all. <laughs> all right. Well, now that you know how, go tweet about it. Boom. Done. Encrypted. <laughs> Encrypt this yeah, episode. Yeah, you should just get like a big lock and just go, wow. Like, <laughs> <laughs>